Our following guest is the lead singer for the band Carnifex. By the time you're listening or watching this, it is July 12th, which means they're on tour right now. So go check them out live and in person. Say what's up to them. They're all great guys. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this conversation. Let's get into it. Please welcome Scotty and Lewis. Oh, this is the first podcast without headphones. Thank you. We're doing it. I'm in. We're in. It's new, a new trend. Hey, you know what? If I think we're probably guys that know a little something about new trends. Yeah, a little, <laughs> a, a little, a little something, man. Dude, you guys are taking off next week. We are leaving in, yeah, in less than a week. I, th- I think we're like one of the first bands back out. Wow. How does that feel? You're going on tour. Um, it feels amazing. And then there's this part of you that maybe thinks... Is this real? Is this is this just fantasy? You know? Um, yeah. I think it's one of those things where, you know, it was kind of a mixed emotions through the whole thing. Like, yeah. it, you know, there's a part of it that is like, we got some really good creative moments out of it. But also as a mm-hmm. band and being a band member, it was like a scary time because you have no career. You have no income. And yeah. and it's that's it, you know? And so I think it was. it's one of those things where it's like, um, it's about to happen, but it's not Christmas morning yet. Yeah. We're waiting. You know, it's like, it's a couple yeah. of days before Christmas. A lot of anticipation. Yeah. We're very excited, but we don't know if we're going to get the surprise bike from the closet just yet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, it looks good. I mean, I mean, I saw that Albuquerque sold the fuck out. Yep. Nashville sold out. Yep. So of a, it looks like a two-week run. It's a pretty brief rip. Yeah, we're it's great. We had a, um, a bunch of, like, U.S. summer festivals in 20 that, of course, got canceled. Of course. And then they kicked them over to, to 21, but then they ended up pushing two of them into September. And since oh, we're nice. doing uh, Dahlia in September, uh, the only one that, that ma- remained was that Rockfest in Wisconsin. Nice. It's a good one. Yeah. And we, were, we really wanted to play. It's a good offer and all that. So we figured, hey, let's do a week there. Let's do a week back. Great. Make, make something out of this. Wow. Bring the show back. Dude, it's back. <laughs> Trying, man. It's next week for you guys. Yeah, July 8th is the first day. So wow. yeah, I guess we're just, yeah, maybe nine days away. Wow, that's crazy, huh? Yeah. Uh, it was this morning I saw a picture of, I follow all the guys from Sem and Dust on, okay. on, on IG. And like they were posting pictures of their first show back like last night, I, I assume it was. Damn. And seeing them like, seeing them like the crowd the moat and the crowd i was like whoa dude People. they're they're on tour that's crazy and i was like i was going into stories they're like posting pictures of like the bus driving i'm like oh it's so cool it's almost like that's awesome that's what my life used to be yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> it's like is it happening again i i think it might i mean no bus like we're back in the van 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. but uh you know it's like uh, you know and, and we we're kind of talking about on the way up it was just like man it's like it's almost there, but not yet. And it's like you want to believe it, but you know, it's been a tough year. <laughs> it's been a tough year, huh? Yeah. Well, year and a half. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for you guys, did, did that year and a half fly by? Because to me, it kind of did. It kind of did. It's weird, huh? Yeah. It kind of did, but it was. It's like I don't know. It's kind of. It was almost like it was like tour in a weird way, where like each day is long, but before you know it, it's over. It, yeah. uh, it was a mind fuck. No, you know you're right. I mean? <laughs> no, you're right. It's like it's long tour, but then wait, then then, then, then and then you're like, home. oh, we're on the last day. No. Uh, last day, okay, I guess. <laughs> See you around. I guess, I guess we're home. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of like you know you're you're saying, oh yeah, tour in a week, and it's like, yeah, tour in a week. Wow, huh? A year and a half. Is it, so, <laughs> oh, I, so yeah, I felt like alone in it. I'm like, wait, it, like, did this? Is it just me or does you really no, felt like? It, maybe it's a musician thing. It could be too. You know, because like, that's another weird thing is like, you realize as a musician, you don't really know that many people where you live, or, le- or at least I didn't. And yeah. so it was like everybody I know and all the people, you know, I've been touring since 2006 full time. So everybody I know, everyone I'm friends with are other touring musicians from you know, wherever they may be from in the world. Everywhere, yeah. And where you see your friends is when you're on the road and, you know, mm-hmm. you, you get a different card from the deck each time you go out. Yeah. And then being at, home for a year and a half it's like i don't know anybody here 
You know what yeah. I mean? It was like kind of a trip. I mean, thankfully, you know, I had Sean, a mic, so it's like yeah, two people. You know what I mean? But then we were like really went deep on the record, which was a great thing. It was like therapy for all of us. Great. Um, but like that was it. That was that was like my only lifeline to real life. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, at least you had you know Mike and 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 your bandmates. You yeah. Know? Yeah. A lifesavers. You know, I will say that on, why you bring up bandmates, I'll say. I don't think I ever appreciated them more. I know it's kind of yeah. counter because like we really didn't do that much band stuff. For the most part, we were like, you know, pretty uh, kind of separated and away from each other. Yeah. Um, but I appreciated it more than ever. It was it was kind of a, a weird feeling where you're like, man, we've been through all this stuff. And even now, all four of us, we're all out of the job. We're all eating it. But yeah. we're still all here working on this thing. Yeah. And like it had it kind of had some meaning in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you like really appreciate your like your band members and what and what what you guys have and then like maybe during the past year and a half you really look back and like man, we did all that stuff. You're talking about like fit for you guys 15 plus years, man, like yeah. and it's only it was it's only one Corey, only one Sean, only one Fred. Like you guys it was you guys doing it, man. Yeah. Like you can really look back and like man, those are my those, those They're my ride or die. Yeah. yeah, dude. And, that, and that's the thing. I think when you're kind of in the grind, because like as like you guys is like we never really took our foot off the gas. Like once we yeah. got the opportunity to get on the road, the goal is always get get a bigger tour, get a bigger tour, yeah. get a bigger tour. And I mean, we never we never stop that. I don't. I think pretty much all of our bands and our scenes are like are like that. You know, yeah. we're all pushing. And so then to have it all go away is just like you know really puts you in a space where you have to kind of reevaluate yeah and like man is this am, am i really is this who i am i really a musician am i am i gonna bail now and try to figure something else out but then man you realize like i i guess i'm a lifer and damn good thing i'm in a band with lifers too otherwise i wouldn't have a band right now that'd be really screwed you know? totally <laughs> so we got lucky you know and of course we got the label you know that we told them like hey we're doing this record they're really cool about you know, right. helping us out, you know, get us a few bucks here and there while we're getting the record to them. And then, um, yeah, I mean, we try to be active online. We did the Patreon, which was weird because it's like we don't really broadcast that part of ourselves. Like, we're all about the show, you know, give them some entertainment, give them some theater. Yeah. So it was kind of a, it was out of our comfort zone, but probably a good thing to connect, like, on a kind of a, you know, very human level with everybody that was you know, also kind of away from live music, away yeah. from the bands they loved. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're both kind of going through something similar. It's like you're not going on tour, they're not seeing bands. Right. Like <laughs> we ain't playing. You know? Yeah, so like, it's like you're both are kind of having this, like, experience together. Yeah, yeah, two, two different positions, but, like, dealing with the same problem of, yeah. like, wow, I'm feeling a huge disconnect from my identity. Yeah. You know, and then as soon as you feel that disconnect from your identity, it's like, that scene in Zoolander where you're looking in the reflection in the street going, who am I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, that yeah. was, that was like me half the year. You yeah. know? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> the fuck, what the fuck do I do? I yeah. forgot. <laughs> right, like, am I in a band? Fuck. I don't even know. Mm. You're in it, dude. <laughs> Apparently I am. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know it. if I was for a while, but it's good. No, it's not, it's normal to have that kind of like, like, oh, you know, don't want to do this anymore. It's, it's, it's normal thoughts and feelings. It's all good, you know. And it's probably really reassuring for you to have, like, being a band with a guy like Corey and Sean and Fred are, are still doing it. So, like, yeah. you've been a lifer for so long. You see them be lifers. It really gives you that, oh, shit, like. Right. Well, I mean, cool. like, and the other band, like, you guys, Whitechapel, like, seeing other bands go the distance and not tap, it's like, yeah. okay, like. If they can do it, we can do it. You know what I mean? Like totally. it's kind of like a strength in numbers type thing. Totally. Uh, I I was lucky enough to talk to you with Derek from uh, Silvertora, mm. and um, they've been grind like oh, yeah. what are they like thirty years grinding? Like it's very similar. They they haven't put their foot off the gas, and uh, <laughs> they're I mean some of the guys are hitting fifty. Andreas is like a guitar player at fifty two, and he's rocking out harder than me. He's going for it. He's like, dude, that's so... And it's putting out aggressive music, still doing it and on, on a high level. And it's what you just said. It's like, if they if they do it and you see them do it, it's very inspiring. It is. You know, they're like, they're not you know taking their foot off the gas. And right. to see them still do it at a high level and still get bigger and uh, successful, get uh, get over uh, 
certain situations. It's it's really inspiring to see that. Yeah, it's, it, it's very it totally awesome. is. It, I mean, it's, we were kind of talking about Cannibal a little bit before we went live, but like seeing those guys get as far as they've gotten, it's it's kind of like it's it's almost like the best slash worst example example yeah. because it's like. He, we're never going to give up because, dude, Cannibal's still doing it. Still doing and it's it, like, man. we're going to just go down with the ship, which, you know, so be it. But yeah. it's like, it's good to see that, like, you know, bands can still survive. And we're kind of talking about uh, that band with Jura, too. It's like, yeah. those guys are all in their early 50s. And yeah. now they're just sort of breaking in the last couple of years. But yeah. they've been a band forever, right? And yeah. so... Yeah, we always make the joke, like, you know, album 12, bro. That's when <laughs> we'll blow up. Yeah, you know? there you go. It's, it's coming, dude. It's, cute. it's, it's coming, it's cute. dude. Go cheer up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Behemoth, they didn't get big till album 11. Come on, you know. Yeah. It's like, but yeah. it's, oh, everybody's trying to get there. Yeah, we're all, it's crazy how we're all in, like, like the same scene, you know. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Like, I think because we were, like, you know, coming f kind of, it's it's weird like i know it's good that you i'm talking to you about this because you you were there and it's like the whole like death core and all that it's like yeah but all that came along like all that came along and got labeled and got categorized after the fact yeah it's like we were just bands doing it yeah. like we, we were just trying to be death metal bands but hey we got a guy that likes hardcore on guitar and totally. our drummer's into metalcore yeah, mm -hmm. you, you know, it just happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, sure. It sounds all right. It's like, oh, it kind of sucks, but it's cool at the same time. Right? Ooh, you know, <laughs> you know, death metal heads and fucking hate it, but we yeah. like it, so whatever. You know? Yeah. And like, it just—that's where we came from. So to see it kind of build up, like a around, you know, like we were like the center of the old town, and yeah. everything got built out around like our old bands. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a trip to like take your head up and look around and be like, oh wow, we're like part of something crazy oh I, I didn't know there's all this other shit here you know <laughs> it's crazy man yeah it's kind of a trip but i guess it's a good thing it's a good thing i, I think you guys should still be very proud that you're, that you're still here and doing it yeah i mean people are just i you know are just now finding out about your band still and, they band, are. and still bands are still being inspired by it yeah it's it's a hard thing to sort of ad admit to yourself i'm not sure why maybe because it's like if, you know i was talking to another person about this and it's kind of like it's hard to take good compliments because yes. because then you would have to take the hate too, right? Yeah. Because or then you're just cherry picking, you know, oh, it's just what I want to hear. Totally. Crit, right? It's just the criticism I want to hear or the critique I want to hear. Yeah. And so there's somewhere along the way, especially coming from where both we came from, where it was like, you know, Deathcore was very hated on. Like people had a lot of things to say about it and yeah. it wasn't positive. <laughs> so like getting yeah. all that shit early on, I think made us sort of just be like, look, we can't, whether it's a, a nice sentiment or a horrible sentiment, like we can't really worry about it. We just have to yeah. look to each other for what we want to write. Yeah. And I think we had that mentality for so long that it, it kind of closed us off from compliments too. Yeah. But maybe that was a good thing. No, I, uh, you guys have the, uh, the right headspace because bad compliments are good. I mean, uh, or bad comments or good comments, they're, they're both the same. Uh, they're both equally yeah. distracting. Just someone's opinion. It's just someone's opinion. It's distracting. And actually, the, the good comments are actually worse because if you start to believe it, as you're just saying, right. it's a very bad thing. You're going down a road. It's like you're, it's very hard to get out of. So, you, yeah. you know, Sam, very similar. You know, I don't listen to good, I don't listen to good comments, but I understand what you're saying as well. It's like, this is why I did it to you. Like when someone gives you a compliment, you're like, you don't know how to take it. Yeah. You know? So, so when someone says, dude, like, like your band's sick, I'm like, I don't know how to take it. So I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm telling you, like, you know, as like, uh, as my, my perspective on, on, on what you've been doing like for, for so long and, yeah. uh, and, and, and your band and seeing it, like you guys should be proud, man. You guys, you guys are still here and still doing it. We're, we're finally getting to that stage. I think, you know, yeah. finally getting to that stage. I appreciate you saying that too. Yeah. So, like it's, I think it's one of those things where you can kind of only accept compliments from someone who knows where you're coming from. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It's kind of a, a, a yeah. fucked up thing to not be able to accept a compliment from someone else's perspective. But in your head, you're like, you don't know where I'm at. But it's all good. Thank you. Yeah. But like, I know you do know where I'm at. You yeah. know, and it's like, it is nice to hear that. And it's almost like a permission to be like, oh, we did, we did do a good job in a weird yeah. way. Cause yeah. it's like, getting permission from like a colleague 
or like a kudos from a colleague and then you can like yeah. so it doesn't feel like you're patting yourself on the back you know exactly totally you want like it's good to hear it but you don't want to pat yourself on the back it's, it's, right. It, it, you're right it's, it's that weird like line you know yeah it's like definitely some motivation goes a long way for mu musicians like for sure <laughs> like one good thing from the right person will Dude. get you like five years <laughs> You are fucking right, man. Holy shit. If you get like, a, 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 a little encouragement for the right person, that will stay with you for it a does. long time, dude. It does, and uh, yeah. that, that really taught me, like, if someone says something to me, I was like, whoa. And it stays with me. So, like, if any opportunity I can get to say something that's truthful, yeah, it, it goes a long way, man. It, it must come from mutual respect. Totally. It must be it. Because it's like, I know yeah. you've done it, so I know you can give the compliment. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, oh, yeah. well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, we've all fucking been, been laying down at 4 a.m. Like, and you wake up to like hitting that like rumble strip. Are, 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 we, are, are we going off the fucking hill right now? We all have that feeling. Oh, and it man. sucks. Hey, and in eight short days, we'll have that feeling again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, can't wait. Here we go. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, something to look, to look forward to. Yeah, but you know what? We need the adventure, man. Like, I can't. Yeah. I guess I, I kind of realized being locked up at home, it's like, dude, like I'm the reason I kind of went out on tour and the reason we did these like MySpace tours with, you know, we didn't have TMs. We like, we didn't even have an agent on these first tours. We would just go and wow. play. My, they're just MySpace shows. You just, you know, it's a garage, it's a barn, it's a, my, yeah. it's a pallets in a horse paddock. Yeah. Like, what, wherever it was that we would go do that for a month. And that was like, that was the adventure. And I, I kind of yeah. realized, like, damn, like, yeah, I love being a musician and a front man. I love writing all that shit. But it's this really interesting combination of artistry and adventure because it's like you got to do all your art, but you got to do it in a different place every single day, and you got to get there, and it's all on you. Have fun. And it's yeah. like, damn, that's an adventure. Like, we got a challenge. Yeah. And I think that's, like, I really realized, like, man, it's not just being a musician. It's being a touring musician that I really, that's really where I thrive is, you know, yeah, and performing, you know. It's kind of yeah. crazy. I realized, like, if I was just a studio musician, it probably wouldn't be that satisfying. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. You me. found, you found what, what, what you love. Yeah. You, you like going out for at least two weeks. Oh, at least. At least. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking the, the Stalia tour is like a six week run. Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. That's when you get like <laughs> week si like week three, week four. You don't even know what day it is. Yeah. You're just like, where's where's the bathroom? Where's catering? What time do we play? Great. <laughs> oh man. That's that's the best feeling for me when you're just in the machine. And when, when you go on stage and you're not even thinking about the set, but you're playing it yeah. perfectly. Yeah. That's the, that's the, you're like, oh yeah, we got this, we're going to watch Talladega Nights when we get back on the bus. Oh yeah, we got that barbecue place. Great. Hell yeah. Oh, the set's done. Great. I'm out of here. Yeah. You know? And everyone comes up and they're like, that was the best show I've ever seen. You're like, great. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> I was somewhere else, but I'm glad you loved it. <laughs> dude, totally. You, know, you guys accomplished what I think a lot of bands struggle. You, I, I, you get the question, you know, how do you, how do you be in a, a band? And how, how do you get like the first step? So how, how. What, what was your process like getting those first shows, even without like a booking agent? How did you get the first shows, like the first yeah. little tour? How, how, how did you get to that to that? Uh, how did we inch into the biz? Yeah. Um, it was friends, and we were actually a part of the music scene. Like, okay. um, you know, like we would go to shows that we weren't playing like we would be at a show every this is like me and Sean, you know. Yeah. And and Corey later on like we would be at a show every night of the week flyering, handing out demos, meeting other people in bands and saying, "Yo, let's hook up, let's throw a show." You know, like yeah. we would go to shows, you know, see a band kill it and be like, yeah. "Oh, wh where are you from?" "Oh, you know, we're from Wildemar." "Oh, yo, know, we're from Fallbrook." "Oh, dude, we'll throw a Fallbrook show, you throw a Wildemar show." Done wow. deal. Wow. Like we were, it was just, it wasn't, we didn't get hype first. We didn't like reverse engineer interest. It was like yeah. we went out and made friends in the scene and that's where the opportunity came from. We, yeah. um, and also that's how we had to do it. Like, you know, all the gatekeepers were, they hard no on deathcore, you know? Yeah. So the only opportunity you had was to go out with your friends. So those early tours, I remember the, one of the first tours we did was us and Burning the Masses. You remember oh, Bird wow. of the Masses, yeah. Chris, and all those kids? Yeah. Yeah, and, dude, we did two bands in one van. You actually did that? Actually did it. We actually did that on two different tours. We oh. did that with Suffocate as well. 
Wow. Yeah, you remember Suffocate? Oh, of course. Right, Oakland, the whole thing. Heavy as fuck. Shout out to Jared. Jared, yeah. yeah. OG, yeah. OG, like, man. We, uh, we did two bands in one van with Suffocate. And, oh, and we went that, out. dude? It was a, a grind, but we're wow. there for the adventure. And we didn't have an expectation. Like, we weren't sitting yeah. there, like, going, well, where's the bus? Where's the chips and salsa? We were like, we're the fucking kids. Let's rip a show. That's all we cared about. Yeah. And that I think that was what, like we kind of scrapped through that first heap of like, you know, is is your band willing to work for it? Or do you want to just like be the dude on stage rocking it? Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, do you want it or do you want what you get from it? You know what I mean? Uh, it's like, you, you know, do you want the girlfriend and like, oh, every, oh, he's in a band. Is that what you're after? Or like, you're like, no, I'm a musician. I'm trying to like write music I care about that means something to me. Yeah, those two guys definitely exist in the in the music world. You know, a lot of those guys get Gym. on tour. Yeah, a lot of those guys get on tour and, and they'll tour for a long time. Um, you know how they get there, who knows? But there are other group of people where they're like, they're more interested in what they're actually doing on that stage, the words they're saying, the music they're creating. Yeah. You know how they're pulling other people into it and and finding a connection with people that speak different languages from other countries with different religions and different governments and like. That's what music is to all of us. Totally. You know, and so that tenacity just drove us to say, well, anywhere there's an opportunity, we'll take it. Because what we care about is performing and getting out there, not what we're getting from it. Like, you know, monetarily yeah. or, you know, like in treatment or whatever. Yeah. And then the first like real good tour we did was Carnif was Amir, Carnifex, Unite, Conquer. That's a good one. It's a great one. And that was me and Jesse. Remember Jesse Kativ? Of course. Yeah, it's me and Jesse on MySpace. He booked he booked East Coast. I booked West Coast. Dude. We just did it, bro. We fucking did it. It was it was awesome. And that tour kicked so much ass. It was like three, four hundred kids a night every night. And it was a straight up MySpace tour. There wasn't one legit prom like Dude. promoter or thing. Like no live nation, nothing. Wow. And I don't we didn't really realize how good we had it at the time. Like we didn't know we were in that special moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. You don't know when when you're back. There, you know it's it good. You're having fun. Yeah. But you're like you don't know it's like oh dude like this is a moment right here, and that I think we just that sort of energy from like seeing like dude we just s straight scrapped our way to this position. Like that's one thing I will say about Carnifex. We never got a handout. In fact, we got we had yeah. a boot on our neck half the fucking time. Like we never got a handout. So the fact that we could scrap to get to where we were, where we had fans and like, you know, Victory wanted to sign us and all that stuff. It was like yeah. that was just gas on the fire for us. And we just yeah. you know, from there it was just never give up. And I mean, we haven't changed that tune, you know. I mean, things got weird with the hiatus cuz we were, you know, legal stuff with Victory, but once we got past that, you know, it was like cool, we can we can just get back to it. And our mindset had like never changed. You know, we did Die Without Hope through that whole time, you know? Yeah. So it was, I guess it was kind of like the pandemic in a weird way where we just said, all right, if something's messed up, let's just go back to our basics, which is the four of us in a bedroom writing music that makes the other guy laugh and go, <laughs> that's heavy. Yep. That's, that's how Carnifex started. And that's how we did our last record. And like, that's just what... I mean, that's just where it's at for us. It's just like, let's just look internally and just stay focused on the fun and and originality, you know, try to just be us, you know? Yeah, just try to be you guys and have that have that foundation. I mean, how, how, how do we start? You know, going going back there, you know, you, yeah. you, got, you, got, you got to have that foundation, you're right. Yeah. You know? what, Dude, what a cool time for you guys. You guys, I mean, that's, goes to show you guys we're out networking, even like when like, especially when we look back now we're like okay i'm like i'm like a shy guy but you look back at what you did when you were a kid you're like oh wow i was out talking to people at shows and flying like fl a flying out like, like it's like how, how do we do that i mean we were driven you know yeah it's cool i mean you know for me it was like music was such an escape and uh just going to shows that was like all i cared about that was yeah. it so to be able to have a chance to go from you know, being on the floor to being on the stage, I was like, my, you know, I was like, I have to do that, right? Like, these are the people I'm idolizing are the, the performers I'm watching, you yeah. know? And so I think that was, it was like that for a lot of us, you know, like music yeah. was our escape and kind of our religion. And so then when it became more than just a passion, it was like, 
you know, well, of course we're just going to go hard, you know, like this is what we've been dreaming about. Yeah. You guys did it. Did it. We're trying, trying. Yeah. I feel like it's, you know, it's still in process, but it is. Yeah. No, it's cool that people need, need, need to hear that people struggle, like try to get to that first step. Is it the second step? How, how do I get on a stage? How do I book? You know, how do I get on a tour? And like you guys, it shows you, you guys put in the yeah. work and like, this is how you do it. We did it ourselves. Yeah, we, we did, you know, and I would say that's kind of the way you have to do because, you know, in the music biz, if someone does it for you, you owe them. Yeah. And, you know, that come back on you big time. And then yeah. suddenly that thing that you created isn't yours anymore. Totally. You know, and suddenly it's like, yeah, change your name. Well, yeah, kick this guy out. This is the kind of record you need to write. And it's like, Uh-oh. whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought this was, you know, our band. You yeah. know, oh no, because we hooked you up. It's our band. And like, that's kind of how the music biz can get. And so yeah. at least we're in that position where like, at least if, if the biz just says, you know, forget Carnifex, it's like, all right, we'll just go play VFWs and bars. Like we, we still have a fan base. Like we don't need a yeah. yes. We don't need a green light from anybody at this point where, yeah. I could call out a bunch of bands that if the biz decided they were done, they'd be done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I'm glad we're not that band, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just like, for us, I feel like it's just that thing where if we stop, we die, you know? You got to keep going. Yeah. Keep going. And even after, you know, 15 plus years, do you, do you feel like you're just starting? I do. All this just to get to the... I feel like we still don't know shit. Same. Yeah, I feel like every Same. time it's like, you go, oh, fuck, I hope we can write a good record. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, God, like, ooh, yeah. God, like, you wrote yeah. that? Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. You like look back at your old records, you're like, how did we come up with that? How do we, who are those people? <laughs> you're like, damn, those good ideas. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know what that means, but maybe that fear is like what drives you to like, oh, I better work hard, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is, but. Totally. I, I don't know. Maybe it's something we put on ourselves, you know? I think it's healthy. Yeah. You know? It, it keeps you going. And what? And, and so special for you guys after so long and the ups and downs, you still have the drive and want to do it and you still have fun. Yeah, you know, and that's something we've been, like, reminding ourselves of. And, like, even, you know, we've been meeting up a lot lately, getting ready for this tour and some other stuff, and we've been telling ourselves, that, let's have fun. Embrace the adventure. Let's have fun. Yeah. Because... You know, I can think of tours we went on where, like, they were badass tours, but for some reason, like, we were just all griping, you know? Yeah. Just, you know, and you're just like, that's kind of silly. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you look back and you're like, uh, I could have gotten over that in a day. <laughs> you know, why, totally. why did I give a shit about that? But Totally. So it, it's a good thing to, like, have everybody in this, like, you know, kind of a, like, positive headspace, you know, fresh start, right? Yeah. Everybody wants to go out with their best foot forward and just be like, make the you know, good new memories yeah yeah we all unfortunately as humans we need that shake up to be like to get right reminded that things get get, get taken away at any, any moment you know you know and in a weird way and maybe you can relate to this it's i felt like there was this we were kind of entering this period like 2018 2019 where like like the sh shows just weren't selling the way they used to Mm -hmm. And maybe people were kind of losing interest, a little interest in like, you know, five guys on stage with guitars and drum. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It kind of seemed like, wow, maybe, you know, a rock band is kind of becoming old news. Like maybe a metal show is just old news now. Mm -hmm. But in a weird way, I think like it, it kind of going away and everybody sort of seeing like how important, you know, all of us bands are. Yeah. And how important like it's not just live entertainment. It's like it's live therapy. Yeah, for both of us here and you know both sides of the yeah. uh, the moat, you know, and um, I think it's yeah, I think that's why we've seen some shows sell out in advance. Like we're not a sell out advance band, so it's cool. It's cool, yeah. Like okay, dude, like, guys, this is a good thing. Let's ride this wave. Let's embrace this, these good vibes, you know. Yeah, and, and we and we're happy with the record. So I think we're just gonna hit the ground running and just just like do what we always do. Say, so, dude, we're it's a pedal down. Let's let's make it happen. It's time, dude. We're still trying, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, get that tour with Slipknot. Like, get yeah. get on those uh, get on those uh, shed tours. They call them right, <laughs> the amphitheater tours. Oh yeah. You know, it's like we still haven't. We never got to that level yet. We're still trying to break that ceiling. Keyword yet. 
keep yeah keep yeah we'll see what happens you know the book is it's not been finished yet you know? it's not man it's not you're not even half, halfway through chapter through 16 yeah <laughs> you know, what uh what record are, are, are you on Seven? i think it's eight eight yeah chapter eight yeah well chapter unless eight. when i count the uh EPs and demos, probably chop, oh, chop to 10. Yeah, 10 or 11, somewhere <laughs> in there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a few. It adds up for sure. But I guess it's it's a good thing. It's just, it, in a weird way, like for us, we, we need to like look back at that ca catalog and be like, okay, like we've been able to write a badass record. Like, yeah, use that motivation to go forward. Maybe we're just yeah. like hella insecure. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. I feel like we're always having to like find ways to like re- inspire ourselves to succeed you know totally I, I i think it's normal especially as artists like you're kind of inherently insecure i know i am i ah, definitely am you know it's like i'll be like one day i'll be like i'm super confident then i'll smoke weed i'm like you're a piece of shit <laughs> you <laughs> suck it's the worst <laughs> dude I, I'll, I'll be sitting in my room all high and alone i'm like you suck. You can't smoke sad, man. <laughs> I learned that this year. Yeah, I learned that this year. Yeah, can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just fucking let it take me where it needs to go. Then, but what's so, what, what's great about being vulnerable? I don't know what it is, but you wake up and like you just in like in like a blissful state, and mm -hmm. then and then, then then you learn. Oh shit! I need I need to work on that. I need yeah. to improve on that. Okay, cool. I'm not as cool as I think I am, and then. Yeah, as, as especially as artists, we're just in, inherently insecure people. We are, know? yeah. Well, you know, it's a it's a what have you done late, lately for me business. You know, it's like yeah. we're all only as good as our last record or our last tour or our oh, yeah. last you know release. Totally. And so I think when you get when you spend a decade and a half in that environment of people yeah. telling you, oh, your next thing better be your biggest thing. Your next thing better be your biggest thing. Yeah. No matter what, how big your last thing was, you kind of yeah. like. You find yourself in this mentality of like I can never be enough, you know, because yeah. it's like every effort you make, it's like oh cool, but the next one will be bigger, right? You're like, well, uh, yeah, we'll try, but the next one will be bigger, and like you hear that long enough, and you're just like, I, I guess it's never enough. I guess yeah, the next one will be bigger forever because I can never hit the mark, and yeah. you, that, that mentality kind of just you end up just going to bed with that, you know? You do. I, I do anyway. No, I'm saying, saying I'm saying like the royal you, but it's me. I'm I should be saying me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's fucked up because that's that same thing makes you feel like shit a lot, but it's also the same thing that gives you that that firing and make, makes you keep going to to improve. So it's, yeah. it's it's like this weird thing where you, like you need that. It is. You yeah, know, it's, I mean maybe it's not healthy, but it keeps the fires lit though. Yeah, I, I think if you understand it and and what it is, I think it is healthy. I gotta master it still, then. <laughs> sure, yeah, true. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I've definitely understood. There's, I mean, I, I don't know shit. I'm an idiot, but what I do understand is self doubt is very, is very real. Yeah. And um, so real. I think it's why it's so confusing for, uh, for artists and people. Where self doubt is like a part of you. It's like it's in your bones. It's like part of your heart. It's why it feels so real. But I learned that just when you, when you get that self doubt, just do the opposite. It's just I gotta remember that. When you get that self doubt, do the opposite. It's not real. It's not fucking real. Yeah, yeah. I gotta remember that. Yeah, I think I, you know. I'm still calling out of the chasm of 2020. <laughs> you know, I'm not there yet, bro. Yet. <laughs> I'm still, bro, I'm still I'm sorry, working man. on it. I, I got you. Well, no, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm like pointer, right, 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 right down. Yoga, okay, right, yoga down. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about yoga earlier. A uh, bunch of mid mid thirty guys. Uh, yeah, try to figure out how to survive in this machine. Yeah, <laughs> but it's cool like, when you get older in age, you get that like experience, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's like by head, like as far as like knowing what to expect or what the tour is going to be like or like how to get through situations. Like, yeah, I'm like I got that in my sleep right now. My biggest enemy is just me. Like the road, I got that on lock. I, I, yeah. we, we've dealt with pretty much everything at this point. Yeah, but now getting this under control, uh, that's not so easy, you know. So that's yep, you're right. That's kind of where where I'm at right now. It's like when you're young and you're just grinding, like you, you know, you, you kind of like the bigger context or bigger picture stuff. Maybe you're like, whatever, get to it when I get to it. Or like, yeah. you just have tunnel vision. Yeah. And then you get a little bit older, a year and a half off, start thinking too much, you know, and then totally. all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I have the skill to go on tour in my sleep, but what about this mind? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, I, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And especially when you're right, when, when you get older, it's like, the more 
the more self aware you, you get, so the more aware you are of of your mind. So it's it's like this weird fuck up thing that the older you get, the more aware you are of it, and yep. then the more those feelings come up. Yeah, it's true. Do you do you do you find that's like the way the way I, it, it is? Seemed, yeah, I've I've felt that in my own life. Like you know, I kind of think back on certain si- situations. I'm like, wow, like I really made that decision like pretty easily. And I think yeah. about it now, I'm like, I probably would have grappled with it a little bit now yeah. as an adult. But back then I was just like, mm, that one, you know, and like, no problem. Didn't think about it a second time, like no anxiety, just moved on with my life. So and it's weird. like, man, I got to get back into that habit, you know, <laughs> or so just, weird. just like calling and be like, oh, I'm doing that now. And it's just, you know, that's a uh, you worry about. But I think another thing it's kind of interesting is like being older and be, still being a musician is you realize the people around you like are becoming more your life and their life is becoming more and more different, you know, cause it's like when, when you're 20 and like, you know, your friends are 20, but maybe, you know, they're doing whatever, but you're on tour, like, okay, it's not that different. Like we're both just kind of, you know, fucking off doing our thing. Yeah. And it's like 25 and 25, you know, okay, maybe they, you know, got like the living girlfriend now yeah. or, or whatever. And it's like 30 and 30. It's like, oh, they finally like, they got the good job finally. Like, all right, <laughs> yeah. hey, oh, you're working where now? Damn, 60 grand a year. Good for you, bro. Like, yeah, yeah he's doing it. All right. Got the nice truck, making the truck payments. Yeah. <laughs> then 35, it's like, oh, like they got a house, they got a kid, like, Oh yeah, I gotta get the kids. This, you know, second grade starts next, and then you're just like, yeah, I'm in the same band I was in. in <laughs> like, remember your band? Like, I'm in the same band I was in uh, back when you were in bands, and it's just like yeah. you realize like your life and the people that are your age. It's just you're just getting further and further apart. And you realize, man, I, I'm just like a stranger on this planet. I'm just living out on the fringe, you know. <laughs> yeah, I kind of felt that a lot, you know, through the pandemic, but. I guess that's that's what you do when you're not actually out on the road. Does that make you feel alone? Yeah, it does. But I, you know, I've always struggled with like that isolation feeling. Like, you know, this goes all the way back to like I can remember being in like second grade and just being around kids at school, waiting in line for the water fountain, like whatever it was, and just being like, I just feel alone here. Yeah, and it's kind of weird. I'm not sure where that comes from, baked in, I guess, but. Yeah, and and man, growing up like, I, you know, it was real isolated. You know, I only made it to ninth grade in high school. You know, and and it was like, yeah, the reason I left high school was because that. Like, I was like, wow, like I don't know any of these people. Like, I'm out. Like, wow. I, I don't. What am I doing here? This is just a thing that people do. I'm out. You know, and so I bounced out. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I kind of had that feeling my whole life, and so it was probably compounded by where my career ended up taking me on the road and, you know, just away from everybody, you know, your own family and everybody's family, you know, you yeah. just live in a different life. Like it's like a different timeline. You know what I mean? It's like, they're yeah. like living here. You're like in dog years, like up here, you're like house and kids, huh? No, just in a band still. I don't know. You know, Dude, dog years. Wow. It kind of is like that. It feels like it's like a different plane than yeah. everyday life for the folks that are doing the nine to five and like I, it's like a badge of honor in a weird way mm-hmm. but at the same time it's like you're also very different you know you have very yeah. different experiences very different outlook you're in a very different situation et cetera, et cetera. so yeah you kind of get you know like damn like am i doing the right thing like am i gonna be able to turn this like turn this band into something because if you stop now well then all you did was just waste 15 now you're just a 35 year old dude with nothing right yeah so you kind of yeah. get to that. It's like, man, we're in sink or swim. Like if we stop swimming now, we're in the middle of the river. We're just get, we're out to sea. Yeah. Never see us again. It's like, we have to get to the other side now. We're too far to swim back and the current's too strong to stop. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you, guys, you guys can't stop now. No. And that, that's like where we're at. And that like, and then, you know, you going through sitting at home for a year and a half. Yeah. And it's just like, this is a tough stream. <laughs> yeah. <know? laughs> yeah. What if I just stop and float out into the ocean <laughs> yeah. yeah and and those thoughts creep up on you like maybe, oh yeah I, maybe i should just stop i should just stop right and then you like like you were saying like sometimes it's like you're like damn like this is the stupidest band on earth like i'm just an idiot yeah like i what am i doing embarrassing myself like i, I should just disappear somewhere yeah like erase this person you know so i don't yeah, know yeah. i guess that's Same. maybe that's why we get get some good records out of us i don't know yeah. <laughs> you know i'm not yeah. sure but yeah it, 
it's definitely riding the, the emotional waves. That's for sure. Yeah, and and do you find it? This also ties into like you're just just beginning, even though you spent so many years swimming, and you're like, okay, now now we're mid now now we're mid thirties, and we you know we see some of our friends. They have like the house and kids, and 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 they paid off the truck already. Right. And, oh, they own it now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and we're like mid thirties, and like it's kind of. Depends how how your mindset is, but this is a very healthy way to like to view it. No one gives a fuck about us. No one gives a fuck about you. you yeah, you gotta now all this to get to like the middle of the river or ocean, as, as you were saying. But you gotta start swimming harder. Yeah, and that's a crazy mind thing. You got this is we got here to swim harder. It's true. Yeah, and that's just and that's just the way it is. No one's gonna feel sorry for me. No one, especially if we're talking like music industry. Oh, they can't wait to get rid of you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Can't, oh, can't wait. Next. God, this is, <laughs> you know? this, like, this is your time to swim harder. Oh, you know? yeah. And, and you know, and we, you know what? I think, like, uh, as weird as we are and as many problems as that, that we all have, like, you know, internally, uh, as I feel like all four of us are, like, these fucked up kids. That's probably why we're all in, doing so well in a band together. <laughs> and yeah, it's just uh, the four of us all these yeah. years. Everyone else is like, I can't deal with these weirdos. This is a fuck, you know, yeah. we're like the mutants at Table 9, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll never find love. Uh, <laughs> that's us. That's Carnifex, dude. Yeah. We're the mutants at Table 9. And But that's all good, and I think we kind of bottled that up in a weird way, and we kind of, like, put some of that spite and some of that, like, you know, kind of like the middle, like we kind of wrote the record as a fuck you kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It was like, it kept us going. So good. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's good to keep some, keep some fighting. You still, you know, keep going. And uh, again, uh, we need outside perspectives to tell us this, but I think you guys didn't even have not You guys haven't put out your best stuff yet. I, yeah, I don't, th I hope not. I, don't, <laughs> I hope not. I don't, uh, I don't, <laughs> Otherwise I don't we so. peaked, <laughs> you know, yeah. If, if you look at like the career span of like, you know, like, like Cannibals or Behemoths or like that, that realm, like they're like, if you look, look at their like eighth record, they put out some fucking like, holy shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we were just talking about it before we went live is Cannibals new record. Like, yeah, they're uh, what, album 16. Yeah. Yes. And it, we're not even halfway there, dude. <laughs> in a weird way you're like oh god yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, eight more records i can't write eight more records you're yeah. killing me right now yeah. um but yeah i guess in the other in the other side of it you're like well at least i got some work left you know at least i got yeah. a little bit of work yeah it's like cannibals 16 records deep dudes are in their 50s and they're just crushing you know so it's like all crushing, right dude we can still we'll write a hey, record eight is still pissed off we're not old yet you know <laughs> yeah so dude yeah you guys got the experience now yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, we're all self-taught musicians, so like that's kind of like, you know, sometimes it's like we're we're just running on raw motion, and yeah, you know, sometimes it can be daunting when you like see like the other bands just like so slick and like they just yeah, we just write a record in a month, you know, and you're just like like what the fuck? It took us a year to write this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, God, we suck. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, but and we had to work real hard on it. You know, like we actually fucking labored over this bitch. You know, yeah. but. Uh, I guess it's one of those things where it's like we, we just kind of have that idea like oh, we'll just outwork people. We'll just keep showing up. It's a war of attrition. We just won't stop. Dude, what you just said is that's it. <laughs> just outwork. I, you can have the perfect plain musician, perfect, way better than you. Actually, they are. Yeah. Oh, they, right. they, we're not that good they are. musicians. They're way better. They're way better. I always, I always tell, I tell the story how like, you know. I knew, like, since day one, like, especially being from Corona, I showcased theater, like, the bands that would play there, it's like, the local scene was like, Oh, yeah. Fuck. It's amazing. Yeah. I knew, like, I said, I said myself being, like, you know, a 14-year-old kid, all these guitar players are better than me. I know it. Yeah. But just, but they will not outwork me. There you go. It's not going to happen. I would just be, and you guys lived it. You guys are, you guys put in the work, and you were persistent, and you still, and you're still going. You, that's evidence that you can not be that skilled and still make it like straight up. Yeah, it's like totally. We, we're just self-taught dudes. Just literally, just we write what we love, but we just yeah, we just show up every show day. Up. And even dude, we had down years, man. We put out until I feel nothing. Yeah, that was a big down year for us. From hell chose me. You yeah, know, it was like did my arms uh, disease hell chose me until I feel nothing. We had to ride that wave out. It sucked. It happens, man. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, 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 it's okay. Even this last one, World War X, like, you know, Die Without Hope, Slow Death, World War X. Granted, the cycle got blown up, but, you know, it's like, sure. you can't, it's not always, you know, sometimes you're going to do that two steps forward, one steps back deal. Yeah. Right? Progress isn't a straight line, I think is the phrase. 
No, you're gonna go ups and extreme downs. And uh, if if I think it, if you're doing it right, uh, you're gonna have low lows because if you, if you want that high high, well, you're gonna have to go through this low low, right? You yeah. Know? And and one record you'll put out, uh, you're making money and great tours, and the next one you put out. Fucking flops and all the money's gone. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> where where, 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 where <laughs> right. the money go? But then you have like that like steady climb up and you know what, dude? It's a cycle. Done it. And me personally done it three times. Well, like that rise up, dude, there's something about it. It's so there much is. fucking fun. Yeah, I think it's, it's fun, you, man. Like you like have that like kind of it's it's that attitude of like, I'll show you. We're back. Yeah, you we're, know we're fucking back. <laughs> and it's like there's something <laughs> in there where like there's something about that the musician that's just like man, we're just going to get up on stage and just flatten people with this record. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if you always have that drive in you, you always got one more record in you. Yeah. You know? And sometimes uh, being inspired and in the drive, you know, I've like still experienced with it, but sometimes it'll, it'll just go away. And I'll be like, oh, shit, like, that, that, that can happen. So when the drive comes back, you're like, oh, I'm just fucking grateful. It, it's it, true. It came back and, 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 we, and we can still go on. Yeah. Because now having that experience, of, oh, shit, like being motivated and inspired and driven that actually goes away the fact that we, that we still feel that is huge you're right you know? yeah yeah i'm glad that like through this uh you know being stuck at home and everything it was it was nice that everybody in the band like immediately was just like dude we just gotta work let's just write music go yeah. let's go and i mean that's why like the record's 15 songs it was like we, we only we've always done 10 song albums in the past you know yeah and so it was just like we just wanted to be a band like so bad in that moment you know be a band <laughs> yeah i was like we'll just write band. music and play for the fans and yeah. you know <laughs> yeah yeah man so just be just be a band again be be that insecure kid that made split decisions again i'm hoping so <laughs> yeah you ever look back and like shit how do because what you were saying earlier about you and sean going out you're, you're, you're passing on demos flyers booking your own shows hit, hitting up people on, on, on myspace Shout out, shout out to MySpace. Oh, yeah. um, you guys were networking. Mm-hmm. And do you find when you get older, you let you network less? And then you look back like, how did I, how, how was I going out all the time just hanging out with people? Y- yeah. It's it, weird, huh? Yeah. It, you you got to like reconnect with like your you're right, young yeah. like networking self. You know where I noticed that a lot was on Warp Tour. We did Warp Tour in 2017 and, and like no one hung out. Like weird. It was weird, dude. It was like, yeah. like it was. It's funny. I I bring up Amir again because Amir was on the, uh, that year. Warped. We we're um, we we're on stages right next to each other. Wait, maybe we play on the same stage. Yeah, we play the same stage, and um, we were the only two bands in vans. Nice. But Warp Tour made us park with all the vendors because we were in a van. So it was the only two bands. In vans were us and Amir, and the only two bands that were where we got parked were us and Amir. Everyone else was where the vendors parked. So literally, it was just us and Amir hanging out the whole summer. We didn't see anybody else, bro. Wow. We didn't see, nobody, we didn't see anybody. No one got off their buses. No one hung out. And even in the catering line, they would just they had like a catering tech. Have you seen this, like a Mayhem and stuff? Yeah. Dude, yeah. it's like not even the dude. It's just a dude that's like the food rudder. And I was tripping. I'm like... Where are the bands? We didn't see anybody on that tour. <laughs> That's so fucking crazy. Yeah, some it was bands. Weird. Yeah, they have that because 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 carry line is like a, a hour long. It's a beast. Yeah, yeah but it sucks. But if you want to hang out, like we're like standing there, we're like, yeah, who are these people? Like we don't know any of these people, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know us, we always try to like make friends with bands because I mean we like, we've been self managed for the last three years, and nice. even when we were had a manager. You know, getting tours was always like the challenge. I, I don't, I don't yeah. like for us, like as a deathcore band and like getting off of victory and stuff, it was like getting good tours has just been like the battle. You know what I mean? And yeah. finally, like getting some like decent opportunities, I think they came from our friends' bands getting bigger. Like it came from, you know, like you guys and uh, Whitechapel taking us out when we put out Slow Death. Uh, that was a huge. That was the first time that we'd ever got to tour with you guys or Whitechapel in the states. I know it's so fucking weird how that happens. Weird, right? But yeah. like that was a huge opportunity for us, like playing yeah. Knotfest. Like, so I think, you know, just kind of. I'm trying to think like the Thy Art tour we just did before the sh- shutdown. Like that was a homie hookup. You know, that's because we were fr- buddies with the Thy Art guys, and it's like, man, I kind of think about it. Like, for the most part, like other than maybe like Warped, 
um, all the best tours are from friends saying, hey, let's go on tour together. Yeah. And that's kind of how it's always been. Like, even going back to that first one, Burning the Masses. Hey, let's go on tour together. And, you know, me and Jesse, hey, let's go on tour together. It's like, I feel like the best ideas are just when, you know, the musicians are working on them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. At the, uh, yeah, you guys built, like, those, those relationships, you know? I mean, they're valuable because, dude, agents come and go, managers come and go. Who mm -hmm. Who's cool as far as who can get you the shots or... or or whose bands are buzzing, like all that stuff constantly changes. But yeah. if you have actual friends and they're going on tour and your band's going on tour, like you can you can keep the door you can keep the doors open, and the lights on, you know. Totally, you're right. You know, and uh, and with our experience with, with that, we had twice. Uh, we went with our manager. Uh, he linked up twice with you know like like the big time name managers, and during both those periods, we got the least amount of tour offers ever. And when we were back with him full on, we got the big tour offers. And that's why I'm weird, really, right? That really taught me like, oh, this shit does, doesn't matter. You get your own tours. Y yeah, in it, a it, it, weird way you do. I mean, there's definitely some plugs out there, but th also those plugs are temporary. Yeah. Like it, you might get the plug, but if you don't like hit a home run or, or whoever hooked you up, like yeah. make a bunch of money on you, you know, like yeah. there, go, there goes your great opportunity. So yeah. it's like all about, I th to me, it's just, you know, hit up the guys in DI, hit up the guys in Whitechapel, hit up you guys, hit up the guys in Die Art. As yeah. long as, like, we're all friends, we the the five of us don't even need the biz. Yeah. We just go on tour together. And yeah. there's, there'll always be kids there. You know what I mean? And, like, there's yeah. something about that that's, like, I don't know if you can say that about many other scenes. Yeah, huh. It's kind of special. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. yeah you're right. It's, it's, it's one of those scenes where, like, oh, yeah, this is, like, a moment. Yeah. This yeah. cool moment we have, like, a handful of, of great bands, you know, you guys, that art's great. White, White Chapel's still killing it. Yeah, but you have like that handful of bands that, that still go out and do it. I mean, it's the it's the big four, I guess, right? Yeah, it's sick. It'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> the big four death core? Dude. It's got to have it eventually. Yeah. Right? Dude, we, dude, we should go on tour together, or maybe it's already happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give JJ a heart, a heart attack. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, but dude, yeah, we're, this is a special time, and it's, uh, it's cool that we, we could sit back and like, oh, wow, that's... It's it's pretty cool, man. You know, and something that we've you know, you guys earned it. We've earned it. That artist is earn, earning their spot. Uh, White Chapel has earned it. Put put in that fucking time. You can't you can't you can't buy that time. You earned the time. No, nah, time on the road is really what where you learn if you're a mis uh, musician, and then you know, you figure out what it means. Like you're kind of going back to the whole like how do you get in and break through and all that. And it's like it's not about your musical skill that's like the yeah. baseline or prerequisite yeah like of course you got to be able to play the music um that, but really that's not what it's about what it's about is like can you be a good friend can you be a good business partner yeah tour is hard work it's it's you know everybody has a role and they're crucial there for the most part nobody's on tour that doesn't have a job yeah so it's like you know it's where you kind of decide like oh do i really want to do this or not and it's also where you learn a lot you know it's learn yeah. you, you learn like how a stage runs you learn how changeovers work out you yeah. learn the importance of being on stage on time and off stage on time like you learn a lot of stuff that you need to know as a musician and tour yeah. teaches it to you real fast yeah real fast <laughs> and it teaches you how to oh you know you know that thing like you you know how you love being alone and, and having your private moments no it's gone yeah, but maybe that's like a good thing. Do you, you know, maybe it's like I I put position myself in a in a place where I'd like never actually be alone. Maybe you know, maybe that's where I was like all these isolation feelings. I'm like, yeah, eight people in a van that should do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel alone anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, we're all, we're all married. Great, great. I, all right, I'm not alone. You know, I'm not sure. Probably some somewhere in my subconscious, I probably made that decision. But <laughs> it's cool. I forgot who made that. And now analogies like they said, uh, picking up band members is like swiping left on Tinder four, uh, four times. Mm. And oh, I'm done, cool. And yeah. then and then it, it it working. I was like, oh fuck. It's like it's like when you meet the band members, you didn't really. There's no conscious talk like, oh, we're we're going to tour forever, and we're all gonna be around each other all the time. You, no, you just do it. I, I guess they're you know they're definitely well, like in the early days you know we had an original guitar player that like great dude and everything, but then it's like yeah hey, you know we're gonna drive up to Fresno to play on Friday night, and it's like, yeah. I got weekend plans, dude. 
It's like, uh, yeah, these are the weekend plans. Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> nah. It's like, yeah. okay, you, once you get past that phase, then it's like, all right, it's game on. You know? I know, yeah, they got, they got to be all in. What, uh, what happened with Jordan? Uh, I think he just wanted to start his own business. Cool. I mean, honestly, like, that's basically, I mean, I w- wasn't re- given a reason, really, you know, when, really? when he left. Um, so, and it was like no bad terms or nothing. Like it was all good. Um, like we just uh, we just did summer slaughter, and it was right before we were going down to South America with Slipknot. So yeah. it was I think it was October or November of nineteen, and you know he's like super focused on uh, boat building and like engine building, and I mean I'm mm. a big proponent of small businesses and people going and doing throwing up their own shingle and doing their own thing. Yeah. So like. I can't be mad at him for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, dude, you, you want to have a, your own business building boats and, and, uh, you'll be on the water, like by all means go for it. I think that was just really what it was about. I think just, you know, and it's, again, it's like that life thing. Like when you're in your thirties and you're seeing other people do other stuff yeah. and you know, the money you make as a musician, it's boom and bust. It's like, you might do a tour and you, yo, I got 20 grand. Eh. And yeah. then you're like, oh, this is all I got all year, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, y- yeah. you know, it's boom and bust. Man. It's not consistent. It's not always that comfortable. Man, you miss out on all the family stuff back home. Like, so, yeah. you know, it's not It's not like it's just a great time 24-7. You, you know, you know that it's work. You give up a lot. Yeah. And so, hey, everyone makes a choice. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm glad he made that choice for him. Like, he's got mad skills building boats. So, nice. dude, be an entrepreneur, be a business. Like, hell yeah, I'm all about that. That's great. Are you gonna, you guys gonna stay a four piece? We're trying to, yeah. I think, I think we will. The new record is, was written as a four piece. Cool. You know, just, just the four of us. And, you know, our, our, Dead in My Arms, we were a four piece, our first record, you know. And, you um, yeah, like Jordan brought a lot of great solos to the band, uh, which we loved. And, like, that was really important for us at the time. Um, cause I think we really wanted to let people know, like, hey, we can be serious musicians. Like, you know, kind of trying to like prove the value of or the seriousness of deathcore and the musicianship yeah. of deathcore. Like, dude, you want to get technical? You you want to get into theory? Like, we'll go there. Yeah, we got you. What do you want? You know. And so yeah. that that was awesome that we could explore that with him. Uh, but now that he moved on, it's like kind of that whole just like we're just back in the bedroom going, dude, that riff's dumb heavy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it doesn't make you make the face. Oh, what's it? Yeah. Put it on the record. You know, Hell yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's basically that was literally our litmus test. What about this riff? Mm. Ooh, that's a good one. Put that on. Like if yeah. it made us made the face, it goes on the record. There you go. You know, and it was like, yeah, that's cool. We, you know, it, it, it's like a sure he had the technical prow- prowess. There's like no debating that. Like we're yeah. just self taught dudes. Um, but as far as like, you know, we still got all the heart we always had. Yeah. You know? So yeah, the, I mean, you heard the new tracks that come out. Yeah. We're just ripping the same as we always did. And Sean, yeah. man, he's such a huge writer. You know, he's been writing the majority of the material from day one, you know? Wow. So his, the card effect sound is, is him. Yeah, man, those are his intact. riffs, you know? It's, it's full, it's full intact, which, uh, you know, that kind of explains like, when you still have like that piece intact, it's kind of a commonality I see with like bands that are, are around for a long time and still have their their signature sound. Yeah, you know, so it's it's huge that that uh, that that Sean's doing that and you're doing it and you know Fred and Corey, you, you had you had that fucking strong foundation there. You can't if, if that if like a Sean left or something happened to Sean, it's that's like dude, you're, you're fucked. I, I don't know, dude. I probably give up. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'd be like, I, I can't do same, it. Man. <laughs> it's I too would. much work on my own. So I guess I'll just drown. <laughs> uh, I'd be like, well, we'll just wait till someone offers us a lot of money for a reunion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, dude, Sean's a big piece, dude. Oh, yeah, totally. Big. Like he kind of, it's weird, like, you know, because he's behind the kit. I don't yeah. think people really realize that, like, you know, blood on my face, slit wrist savior. Hell chose me. Uh, see, drown me in blood. Die without hope. Uh, World War X. The song like those are all Sean's songs. Like, wow, he wrote all those. Those are his. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, he's been writing hits since day one. You know wow, what I mean? That's awesome. I just just keep doing what you're doing, man. <laughs> you know? That's great. And you know he's he's actually become a better guitarist lately because you know when Jordan left, he was like, "Fuck, I gotta write like a madman." And so I think he kind of like put that 
you know, because Sean and I, are, we're, we're like kind of similar dudes, like, you know, always sort of like feeling like we're behind the eight ball. And, you know, so he just like, he went hard on guitar. I like nice. got a brand new seven string from Ivanez and everything. And Sick. Just, Fucking, started going. I uh, do. He he wrote a brutal record. Him and Corey, like they. I have to admit, man, like those dudes stepped up, and they just were fucking riff machines, and they 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 wrote some fucking riffs. That's great. Yeah, I was, it pushed me. Like as a vocalist, I'm like, oh damn, these gnarly riffs. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> like I can't yeah. get gnarly over here. Some good, put a good roll over that. You know. <laughs> yeah, do you have to? You ever like? You guys ever come up with like a riff, and then you're like, uh, it's not it's not that good. But but that's the riff that like. Will stay in your head a month later, a year later. You, yeah, you, you ever I mean, have that sometimes. That's kind of like this one song we just put out, "Pray for Peace." It's like it's a basic hook riff for the chorus. Yeah, it's not really even that brutal, and it's not really complicated. But damn, it's catchy. Yeah, you know. So it stays, it stays we're like, ah, we throw it in. You know, and then of course some of the comments are like, eh, "This isn't that heavy," and it's like, don't worry. There's a lot of looks on the record, like. You know, one riff is a little more catchy than another. Don't trip. We got you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You got you got to throw in some some catchiness with with the extreme music. Yeah, I mean, to. we're all about contrast. You know, contrast. Yeah, for sure. Where do you see? Where do you see the deathcore scene going? Hmm. You know, honestly, I hope it gets. It needs to get like acknowledged first. To be honest, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Like it needs to be. Um, co-opted by metal at large you know it's still yeah. we're still the juggalos of metal <laughs> that's yeah. how they look at deathcore like yeah. even on world war x dude everyone's telling us oh don't call yourselves deathcore don't call yourselves deathcore no 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 you're you're a metal band i was like uh are we i think we're a deathcore event no you're not and it's like okay sure we're a metal band great whatever you want um but we really just said forget that this time around yeah. And thankfully, like, it's nice to see, like, you know, Slaughter and Lorna, like, kick down the wall for acceptance as far as, like, a younger generation not having that gatekeeper mentality. Mm. Like, they're just all right. They're just all about it. Yeah. Like, nobody's like, you know, before it was just they shut the door in your face if you were deathcore, you know, and wow. that's not happening anymore. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing yeah. new bands get a chance. You know, I'm seeing young deathcore bands like get treated like they're legitimate bands. Wow! And that makes that get, that makes me feel like, oh, we do have an opportunity because, like, when all of us were coming up, we were like, you know, we were all the redheaded stepchild of of death metal. You know, yeah. And no, oh, we can't take a deathcore band on tour. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. gonna ruin our image, our cred. Yeah. And I think that's finally over. Yeah. And I just want to see it acknowledged at large. Like, Grammy nom a deathcore band already. Like they're so so late on that, so yeah. late on that, so late on that. It makes me irate that they cannot, they can't even consider the genre. It's true. It's still like yeah, it, you, like, like the genre is not. You know how many records yet. Deathcore sells? You know how many streams Deathcore does? You know how many rooms Deathcore sells out? And they will not acknowledge it because they, mm, I don't like it. And it's just like, first of all, that's got to go away. You got to recognize that this is a genre that has power, has fans, and it isn't online hype like these are bands that have you know 15 years of road work and real fans but you know between us you guys white chef us 45 years of road work yeah take us serious yeah you know what i mean so let's see that happen and then i think you'll finally actually see if deathcore bands can actually get a chance to like be big bands then the whole thing will start working because if you just cut us all off at like 600 cap rooms, then that's all the genres that are ever going to get there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that's my thing. They need to acknowledge, the biz needs to acknowledge it at large. You know, and maybe that'll happen in these this next year. I think it's starting to. That The, the whole, like, you know, deathcore is the worst music on earth is finally starting to change. Yeah. Finally. It's crazy how long that shit takes, man. It's just, uh, man, people are afraid of originality. Yeah. They, f they hate it. The music biz hates it. Yeah, it's weird. It, I mean, w if you know the biz, it's not weird. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems, you're like, oh, that's kind of yeah. counterproductive. But then if you actually, you're like, oh, it makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, um, you can't monetize something that's outside of the system. So keep it outside of the system. Right? Yeah. You know, um, that's finally changing. So 
hey, let's let's see some deathcore bands get opportunities. Like, like someone's got to go out with Slipknot already. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, someone's got to go out with Rob Zombie. Like, you yeah. know, it's like you guys went out with Corn. I, th- I think it's like the biggest tour I can think of. Yeah. Right. Like, where, has Lamb of God taken any of death, any of these deathcore bands out? No, I know there was talks. This never worked out. Amon Amarth, Behemoth, Arch Enemy. Like, it's so weird. What? Like, dude, these bands sell tickets. Th- these bands will pack rooms. Not even on the list. You know what I think the problem is also is uh, there's no, there's no vision. I I share share with you a quick story of mine. Uh, speaking of like, uh, we let the big. Uh, manager agency. We, 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 we're only with, with, with Jerry now. He got us that that corn tour. So like the whole reality is like it was Jerry. Yeah. Like, he got us a tour. We were uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna say names, but we were in New York, and uh, we were talking to a booking agent, a cur- the current one that, that helped us get get that tour. Awesome. And uh, that was right. We were gonna write the self titled. We're like, right, we want to take like a year off, two years off. We want three years off. We want to like stop touring to focus on writing great music so we could keep doing this for our scene, for like for us, for our, our future, the the whole scene. Yeah. And he was like, dude, you're right. You guys need to like write a sick record. Take, like, take all the time you want. We 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 got home, he dropped us. <laughs> fight on sight. I'll just say it. That's fight on sight. Oh, uh, it's like it's like we fucking can't win. Even when like yeah. when like we got like a sliver of like being like doing. We got really lucky with all these tours we got for for. It's for we all benefited from that. Oh yeah. And then we got shit on. Right when we got home, we got fucking shit on. That it makes no <sighs> sense. No, but see, but that's dude. That's the biz, and that's this is what I'm telling. Like that's what I'm talking about. The what have you done lately for me? This is why we're all scarred individuals. <laughs> it's because no matter what we do, we're just waiting to get oh, axed. We just, you know what I mean? <laughs> like this it's, is why we're going through because it's like. At every turn, you just someone's just waiting to screw you. You know what I mean? I know. Dude. And it's like, damn, man. It's like uh, I thought we were supposed to be just like artists perpetuating good art, but I know, dude. Uh, it couldn't so, be further from the truth. So weird, dude. Yeah. It's like okay, I mean, so okay, what does that mean for us? And but what does that mean for our genre? If like we literally, uh, what what we got a fucking corn tour, dude? Like, all right, you what we're gonna that scene's good. We're gonna take a break and let like, do, and we get fucking dropped. It was so. Yeah. Shocking. I mean, shout out to to JJ that you know, uh, got us, but it was so, it was so shocking. Like, like, this is what we, everything you were just saying. Like, this is where we're at. This that, is where okay. we're at. Yeah. So that's what I'm <laughs> saying. So it's like, look for for Death Court to like take the next step, um, and for us to get you know more new young bands, like uh, different you know sounds across the deathcore subgenres you know blackened beat down you know straight up old school deathcore like whatever yeah. you want to call it like it there has to be opportunity yeah. and if it's if it's just uh you know four bands like scrapping it out to the death like oh we got to get this you know 600 cap tour you know if, like yeah. just not enough meat on the bone and the scene's just going to wither you know what i mean yeah totally but i don't think that's happening and no. I think the tide is changing. Like seeing, you know, Brand of Sacrifice and um, like some of these new bands popping up, like Distant, Mental Cruelty, um, like uh, was it Signs of the Swarm, like these young bands that are gnarly and brutal and they're getting chances and people are embracing them right out of the gate and they're not getting shit on for the first decade of their career. It's like, okay, maybe the tide has changed. And when we get kind of back on the other side of this, like, you know, it's like I can remember as recent as Slow Death. We still could get a decibel review. They gave us a two, and I got it. All the guy did Dude. a two out of ten on Slow Death, which is a good record, by the way. I'm pretty yeah. proud of that one. Um, a great selling record too. Like sold yeah. thirty thousand copies. Like it's not a bad record. It's like ten million streams on it. Gave it a two. Um, and the whole description in the article was just his opinion on how horrible the genre was, and then wow. he compared compared it to a trip to Taco Bell. What? At, um, this is a real article in Decibel. Fuck. Decibel magazine printed this. Um, and it's just like, dude, never once did you address any of the songs. You didn't talk about any of the lyrical content, any of the themes. Like, huh. y- you're just shitting on the genre. Yeah. And that was 2016. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I'm glad to see that. That needs to go away. 
because all that yeah. does is is kill vision, kill artists. Yeah. All that is is a reflection of a lack of originality and a fear of originality. Yeah. So I hope that's gone because I remember all of us. We took all that shit super personal, you know, and it was just like, dude, we, like that whole we can't win thing. Yeah, that was yeah. our we can't win. Yeah. We like busted our ass on that record so hard, like spent a ton of money on the videos, like really tried to go for it. Yeah, and then just oh garbage, and you're Dude. just like, huh? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, right. All right, I see you. <laughs> cool. Just so we know where you and I stand, you know. And I think yeah. from that point on, we were just like, you know. And then we go into World War X, and everyone's still don't call yourself a deathcore. It's like, man, it's like someone telling you, you know, don't be who you are. Whatever you do, don't say who you are. It's just yeah. like, this is weird, but this is music business. <laughs> yeah. So so you see the genre getting brighter in the in the future. I do, yeah, I do. I guess that's a really long-winded way to answer yeah. where do I see Deathcore go? Like I see I think we we went through the valley. Like we all went through it. Yeah. And I think our our perseverance, like Talk about giving ourselves credit. Like, you're here so I can give you the credit. Let me give you some credit. Like, all the bands now that are getting a pat on the back, it's because you guys went and did it and had to get shit on and, like, had to take the shit and had to go, that's not death metal. You should, how dare you, right? We all heard that forever. Yeah, forever. You guys dude. had to go through that so these bands could get, you know, embraced from the start. And so that yeah. is a badge of honor that you should wear. Give yourself credit for that one. Yeah, we 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 fucking did it, man. Yeah, and, and and I'm glad that our bands like had the fortitude to to kind of be the tip of the spear, eat the shit, yeah, and be like, we're still here. Come on, guys. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> you know, now we're we got some good. backup. You know what I mean? <laughs> put these young guns on the front lines. Let yeah. them take a few shots. You yeah, know? We're, all, we're, we're all in our fucking wheelchairs. All right, all right, yeah. all right, all right kids. <laughs> Someone get big and take us on tour, please. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Someone blow up because we can't. <laughs> I know. Yeah, as, uh, as as we were saying earlier, we haven't even seen like the best of it yet. I think. I, Maybe I, not. I think, I think it's like that with with most genres. I was uh, I went to San Diego and saw Corn with Alice in Chains. Oh wow, and, that was uh, good. I that see, was been good. Yeah, I mean, that was like the most recent U.S. tour. Very, very, very recent. It was awesome. And I've seen Corn. I mean, uh, uh, so many times. But that day was different. I mean, at that point, they've been like a band twenty. I mean, twenty five years or so. Yeah. But, but to me, I was watching them like they're corn now. Wow. They're they they felt like as a fan, it felt like they're corn. They're they're respected by all genres of music. It's, That's true. It took them that long to I me mean, just to realize. Oh wow, they're they're corn now. Damn. So was that year twenty five? We gotta get to. Sure. I guess. Okay. We're, we're, we got another ten years. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we got, dude, I mean, you got to think, man. I mean, we're just talking about, you know, bands in the late 40s, early 50s putting out their, like, re really high-quality stuff. We're, we're, Isn't that we're kind of a bummer? Why do we have to peak in our 50s, man? Why can't it be right now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> dude, oh, I mean, these days, dude, who knows? I mean, it could, it could go longer. I mean, I'm I'm personally looking at bands like Sepatura, Cannibal, I'm mean, also Slipmont's on that list, The Corns, like, yeah. just watching them, like, how long can you guys go? The thing, I, the thing I think about some of those bands is they, they kind of, they actually like got some, to reap some of the rewards. That's the challenging thing about Deathcore is like, we're all like so working class. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're paycheck to paycheck. Like obviously the second touring stopped, like we're yeah. like dead it's broke. Tough. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and it's like, I think, man, it'd be crazy to, you know, I don't know if those days of like. That the that corn and slipknot when they came up like those days are, are probably gone i guess as far as like getting that those record deals and like that yeah. kind of tour support and all that stuff crazy time right? yeah i mean i i guess there's other ways to make it now you know other platforms if if you're if you're able to uh evolve you know kind of yeah get creative so yeah it's it's still like a, a wild west out there it's still kind of like choosing an adventure you know you're right, you're right. and now there's there's not a one way anymore. There's a, a lot of ways. That's why I love seeing new bands come up, like uh, like yeah, Spirit Box. Mm. They did their own thing. They put out singles, and now they have a record out. They're all right. They're they're doing their own thing. It's cool to see bands do their own thing. There's no one way anymore. You, you guys, like we could be like a similar band, but you could do one way. We could do another way, and it's it it it, it could be successful. There's no like right. gatekeeping one way. Like, oh, you gotta this is the only way, and that's it. There's all kinds of ways now. 
Yeah, and it, yeah, it's kind of like pick your poison on which which one you want to take, you know. So we'll see. We're gonna try to get this YouTube and going on this tour coming up. Yeah, we're trying. I mean, we're trying to you know not be cavemen. You know, like we think back, like yeah, all right, so we popped back into MySpace days, and I remember we would go on tours with like. I remember we go out with like Unearth or something bleeding through, and they like wow. they hated MySpace. You know what I mean? Oh wow! Right? You know because because they're, they, they're from the era of like we got a real record deal. Like yeah, an A and R guy scouted us, came out to the show and signed us. Wow. You know, and so I remember they were kind of you know they'd be like you know, MySpace bands, right? And so I'm like yeah. All right, well, we came from MySpace, whatever. We figured it out. And it's like yeah. looking forward. It's like, all right, YouTube and TikTok and everybody's doing that stuff. It's like, don't be a caveman. Like, don't be that hater. Don't be a hater, dude. No, it's like, all right, figure out what's working. Jump on that shit. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, fans on any level or any uh, age gap, I mean, we could all learn from uh, each other's scenes. You know, like uh, like, like the younger bands doing new stuff could look, learn from what we learned and accomplished. We could look back at what the younger bands are doing. Like, mm -hmm. we, we could we go learn from each other you know and uh, find find what works for us you know maybe for you guys it's youtube for me i found you know youtube and, or, or maybe for that band is tiktok or like find find your one yeah. thing and i mean yep. i mean it's if, if you like doing it do it and, yeah. and learn and don't you're right just don't be a hater yeah i mean and that's the thing too if you if you uh, that's another thing like i was thinking back to that era when we were just like trying to scrap it out um you know emo was real big uh, like screamo was super popular in 05. It was. Yeah. Like, you know, metalcore was just fucking huge in 05. Yeah. But it's like we weren't I don't really remember like there being like a group of people that like hated on the different genres. It was I more don't like either. Yeah, it was more like well, Weird. no, we're metal kids. We we just worry about metal. Yeah. I don't know. But now it's like everyone's like worried about whatever other genre is and like, you know, yeah. dipping in and being like your genre sucks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally, like totally. so uh, we didn't waste energy hating yeah, and it's like, all right. So trying to learn from lessons from our youth, like how to get back to that carefree kid, like you were saying. Yeah, it's like, all right. Well, you know what we did? We didn't. We weren't haters. Like, we weren't like negative about other people's success or yeah, you know, whatever. Someone popped off doing that or popped off doing this. We were just focused on our thing, and so we try to yeah. just just bring that back. Just because I feel like we're at this kind of secular moment where like MySpace and Spotify. Like, I feel like MySpace trained us for Spotify in this weird way. Like, as far as, like, look, it's monthly engagement. Like, you got to find a new way to pull people in. Totally. Like, constantly. Totally. And so in a weird way, I'm like, dude, it's just a different, you know, corporation. It's the same game, though, you know? So You're right. Yeah. Throughout your whole career, what would you have done differently? Is, is, is there one thing you would have done differently? Dude, I thought about that question a lot. <laughs> yeah. Over this last year and oh, a half. Yeah. Not the one thing, the thousand things I oh, could have oh, yeah, done different. I mean, you know, that's like an impossible question because there's like parts of you that are like, oh, we, we never would have agreed to work with that agent, you know, or yeah. we, we never would have signed with Victory, right? Because it was like a, you know, it was like a big hurdle in our career it was this weird thing. Yeah. But then you're like, well, then maybe we wouldn't have written... Hell chose me. I, yeah, I, that weird? I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, yeah. to kind of try to play armchair quarterback and look back and say, what could I have, what choice would I have made differently? I guess, I guess this, um, if you sign a contract, get a lawyer <laughs> because we signed our victory deal with no lawyer. <laughs> what? We didn't know anything, Scott. man. We're kids. Fuck, man. They sent the contract to a FedEx in uh, Ohio. We were out on tour. I can't remember the city. And we were just like, yeah, here, here's the number. And they they faxed it through. We just fucking signed no it to way, FedEx dude. and faxed it back. No way. True story. True story. They FedExed you the contract and you just signed it. Yeah. Wow. 20 grand, dude. Wow. <laughs> right? 20, 20 oh, grand, you're like, fuck. hey, shit. I'm like, yeah, but when you're kids and, you, you know, you did a re your fuck. last record cost $600, you're like, 20 grand. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> you know? Fuck, man. And you know what did us in, again, going back to Jesse, Jesse was like, dude, just sign. Because they signed it. They just signed a victory. Oh, he wanted to fucking take, it, take you down with them. Yeah. Fucking fuck Jesse. Her. Jesse ain't even in the band. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah, so they, they got their deal when we were on that tour together. Fuck. So that was, uh, you know, what, summer 2006, I guess. We were on that tour together. They got their deal. And then we got our deal 
uh, in like in November, I guess. So a few months after. Wow. And like, yo, Jesse like told told uh, like Double J or Bub, whoever was working there back then, like, oh, you gotta check out Carnifex, dude. Yeah. And uh, and I remember we got like the call, we did the like the showcase. Like this is like old school days. Like we went and had to do a showcase. Damn. Just for the label execs, and it was that was a weird story, dude. So this is yeah, it's like I guess 2007, 2006, kind of right around the end or beginning of one of those years, and. Uh, we just played in this, it was like not too much bigger than this, but like a, a little bit more space for an audience. And they blacked everything out. They had an LD and a sound engineer that were there just for us, just to like mimic a show. They made us get on stage, wait. They blacked everything out and they opened like the back doors and like everybody walked in. You could, you know, like try to see like the silhouette, like, oh, this is there, you know? And then we just played. And then when we finished, they kept all the lights blacked out. Everybody left. And then they turned the lights on, and then our A&R dude came back. He goes, all right, we'll give you a call, send you an email, whatever. We're like, okay. <laughs> Whoa. And then like 45 minutes later, we had the email. And then like the next day, we signed the contract like, into FedEx. Wow. We, it was like, or maybe it was two days later, because we were in Chicago, because that's where their offices were. Yeah. And then we were in, outside of Cleveland, in Ohio. So maybe one, or maybe the next day or the day after we signed the deal and they sent that email like 45 minutes after I should have known something was up before we even signed this thing because I remember the guy told us I can't even remember the A&R guy's name but he's like oh we'll get you gas for the drive and blah 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 because we had to kind of go out of our way to get to the showcase yeah they never gave us gas money Ooh, that I should have that That's should a red have, flag dude right there right there I would have been like but you said you're gonna give us gas money and you didn't huh I mean like oh I'd take oh. that back <laughs> wow. but whatever we signed it we did it we did seven years we got out we're on nb now live and learn Great. you know live so that so that's that's your one i guess yeah it's get yeah. a lawyer and then it's also like it's it's kind of like uh you know I'm, I'm married been married happily married love it and i realized you know i had a lot of failed relationships before and yeah. i realized dude like the thing i see the parallel between sean and my wife is their friends. And that's yeah. the thing is like, dude, if you're not in a band with your friends, like actual friend. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, man. You know what I mean? It's like being in a relationship with someone who's like, oh, they're hot. But it's like, this, what do I even talk about? Like, we don't like the same movies. We don't like the same music. Yeah. You want seafood. I want steak. Like, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. And it could be like that one. with musicians. Like, oh, dude, he's a sick drummer. Dude rips. You know, you're right? I never thought about that. Yeah, way. and you're like, okay, yeah, dude rips, but we ain't friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's like he needs a rip in some other band. You know? Yeah, and it's yeah. like that's kind of what I learned is like at the end of the day, it just comes down to the strength of that relationship. And if you actually care about that person, you're actually friends, and you actually have like a common goal and common interest, you can get pretty far. Totally. So I would say, yeah, be in a band with your actual friend, and then you and your actual friend need to get a lawyer before you sign anything. You got Dude. those. You should be set after that. That's all. That's it's good. Set. Everything else is up to you. You know, especially. I mean, especially like like the language they they use. It's like cross collateralization of royalties. It's like, I don't know. Watch out of, for that one. Here, here we go. It's like, I, I don't know a lot of these words. That's code for you're never getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Took us about twenty five grand to learn that. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, the uh, like the language they use. It's you need. You definitely need a lawyer, man. I, yeah, I, we're just kids. We I'm just shocked. saw twenty thousand dollars, and we're like, great. <laughs> you saw you saw one number you liked. Twenty grand it. looks good. <laughs> yeah, it, it could have had a fucking negative, and then you probably, probably, probably went and saw it. I mean, we just you know we wanted to be on the label with Darkest Hour with BT Bam with our yeah. friends in a mirror. Yeah, you know what I mean. We went on tour with we, we were. We were going on, oh, we might have been on tour with Whitechapel at that time. It was a weird tour. It was like, My Children, My Bride headlining. Nice. And then like uh, us and Whitechapel and then across five Aprils. Okay. Like, I'm in the Wayback Machine right nice. now. Let's go. Uh, and and we, I remember they, this is before they had their Metal Blade deal. They, yeah. they just put out Somatic and they were still on that sick London label. And we were like, yeah, dude, side with victory. I was like, paying it forward like Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. I'm like, please, I just need friends in here with me. Oh <laughs> you know? my God. But yeah, they ended up signing a Metal Blade. But 
It, you wow. know, it was we were all getting deals back then. We were all trying to grind. I mean, you guys got the Century deal. Yeah. You know, like, you know, we were all just trying to do it. Try and do it. Yeah. And now you learn, uh, sp speaking of contracts and, and learning, even when we have a lawyer, dude, it's, uh, it's tough to know. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know we, we, we signed our master's away until like six months ago. Whoa. Although like, so we don't, we don't own our masters. I thought like, when did that happen, bro? Shit. That's kind of heavy. It's a, it's a fucking heavy one. Like I actually like sat and like, wait, what, what does that contract say? And like, yeah. we, and then we had a, a, a lawyer look and like, oh shit. Yeah. You don't own your masters ever again. That's brutal. I was like, oh fuck. I could have swore. It. Especially when you're trying to think back at that, at that time, you're like, Oh, I thought like I said, like in ten years you'll like own like right? your, own your in masters. Ten years the rights revert, and yeah. then they probably had some language in the next paragraph. It was like that doesn't count. Yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, that last paragraph doesn't mean anything. I mean, here's in the, in the next. Uh, here's what it actually means, dude. It's like I was so shocked. My, like, how did I? How do we let that shit happen? And then you have these conversations, and you learn. Wait, that's actually very normal. That's that's a very normal clause in in, in the contracts, which. Back then, may, maybe it worked, but now as we come into a little bit, you know, in 2020s um, and so on, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you probably own your master's or at least like have a bigger percentage. So when you're 10 years down the road, 15 down the road, like, you know, as far you as that yeah, 50% or whatever, you got to get something. Yeah. You know, it's that whole master's thing is weird. Like our first record, uh, we were trying to do a re-release of it, like, because it's never yeah. been on vinyl. It's never had a wide release. Like, oh, wow. Nothing, you know, because on a little indie label that huh. that like got sold and whatnot, and oddly enough, so the label we were on also had uh, Fallout Boy, and yeah. they put out Fallout Boy's very first album, like very very first one. Wow! And Fueled by Ramen wanted to re-release that record. Yeah. So they bought the whole label, and Fueled by Ramen's Sony. So our record ended up with Sony. Wow. And we go to Sony and we're like, hey, we want to buy this to re-release it and uh -oh. do a vinyl. And it wasn't even worth it to get the lawyers on it. They're just like, nope. So Sony owns our first record. Wow. And just doesn't give a rat's ass about letting us Fuck. or anyone do anything with it. I'm just like, Man. what a weird world. It's a weird... <laughs> it's a weird world. It's Man. like, how did that $600 record end up owned by Sony? Weird. It's weird when it gets like legal you know yeah and I'm, then i think yeah. back i'm like we didn't even sign a contract for that thing who sold it yeah like where, where's the signature that says i signed that over that doesn't yeah. exist i'll tell you it doesn't exist because we were there and no one signed anything i know and then you're like huh <laughs> you know like, like oh okay wait if i had a lawyer could i just go get that back you're telling me you can't sell me something that i never even signed away show yeah. me the, the contract that says you own that Right? <laughs> wow, what the fuck, man? It's a weird world. A, that's so that's but, so strange. But they own it, so figure it out. That's so fucking strange, man. Yeah, wow. Hey, that's the music biz. It makes no sense. Makes no sense. <laughs> I, I guess what, what we're trying to do is uh, share our experience with, like, you know, just maybe uh, go back and forth a, a, little, a little bit. Maybe, like, read the, read the fine print a little, a, mm -hmm. a, little, a, little, a little bit more, you know? Maybe a little bit, especially now. I hear labels are doing some weird deals now. Like now, you got to throw in like streaming numbers, and I, I, I don't know where it's going. It's crazy. I mean, I guess pretty soon here we could all just be independents, just working the apps, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, there's no, there's no uh, Best Buy retailer that you need to have a relationship with in, so they take in fifteen thousand physical copies and give you good placement. Like, yeah. That's what the label did. I remember, I remember and that. And that does, isn't needed anymore. Wow. And if you go so to the label strange. and you ask for like, you know, well, what are you doing on Spotify? What are you doing on this and that? They, they look at you like, you know, you're from the future. So it's like, huh, okay. Yeah. So like, you don't really have a, that much of a handle on this, do you? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're searching just like us. We're all just like, uh, do this, right? And if everybody's just in the do this, you know, like if we're just throwing darts at the board, I mean, I guess... Bands are just gonna probably go for it. Like, what was that band up in Canada? Protest the Hero. They they got like three hundred grand to do that independent record. You remember that? Wow, I heard about something like that. Yeah, they just yeah. threw up a crowd fund, and they're just like, "Hey guys, our dealer expired. Expired. It, it's just us now. Wow. So we just want to make this record for you guys. Like, help us out." And they ended up getting three hundred thousand dollars. And you know, I don't know how many copies they sold, but mm -hmm. I've never made three hundred grand from all eight records combined in my record deals. Yeah. So that seems like they got a pretty good deal. 
Yeah. Just going straight to the fans. And wow. I mean, dude, if you can just do that, it's like, well, the whole idea that the, you know, the label's the bank, they're going to front you the cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So you're, you're a bank because there's no Best Buy or Hot Topic. So you're yeah. just lending me money to make my art now. But it's like yeah. world's worst interest rate. Oh, and by the way, you own half of it after you give me the loan. Yeah. It's like, why don't I just borrow the money from somewhere else or just go to the fan base and not owe, owe anybody other yeah. than the record? And, yeah. you know, protested that they had a lot of success with it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it happening more. You know, metal and rock is always a little late. Mm -hmm. And a lot of bands are still in their deals. You know, they're multi-year, multi-album deals. So it's, yeah, can't just jump. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of have to let them play through. So I think as more, you know, because we're probably all living off deals that were signed five, six, seven years ago still. Most bands are, I would imagine. Yeah. Still, you're still, you're still, uh, even if you want to do something, you're still kind of living with what you signed like at least five, five years right. ago. Right. You're, you're in a deal. And not only that, that deal was probably like, that, that contract was actually probably crafted in like the early 2000s and they just plug your name and their oh, numbers fuck. in it, right? Yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> these are old deals that they have to like, expire and play out and i think as we get into a position where like big bands aren't re-signing or young bands are breaking independently mm -hmm. you'll probably see more and more bands just say reaching to their fan base directly you know hey put the pre-order in you know a few months earlier than you normally would and mm -hmm. let's just do this thing without having to get the loan from the label and then as a band it's like you get anything up on a dsp yeah all you need is an email address and a and a wave file yeah. It's like, it's just a little bit of legwork, and you're on Apple, you're on Spotify, like, anyone could buy an ad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, they kind of just, look, they kind of are starting to look like middlemen, you know? Yeah. Which is uh, one, one of the main reasons, one of like the, the many reasons why you know, I'm doing stuff like this, like, so we could talk about this stuff. Now it's not, not like in the biz. Now it's like, now it's in the open. Right now, yeah. now, now people can hear about it. Now the label could eventually hear. Oh wait, people are actually talking about this out loud. Now it maybe lets let, lets a fire yeah. under their ass to figure out something, you know. You know the music biz has always been slow to evolve. You know, it's mm -hmm. like look at how film and TV got on piracy so quick. Music biz didn't, you know. Yeah. And then we just look at film and TV. They got all their own apps. They own their content. Music biz didn't. Like, yeah. where's the Roadrunner app with the Roadrunner catalog? <laughs> like, like you know, yeah. like, straight up, uh, whoever's running that place, like, you guys missed the mark so hard. You have the, yeah. you have the catalog. You have the capital. You can hire anyone you want. And this is yeah. like all these labels. Yeah. No, they just handed the keys over to, to Big Tech. Fuck, you, you handed the keys over to Spotify. Now we're in a race to the bottom. Yeah. Good job. You know, it's just like, man, the, the music biz just struggles to keep up. You totally. Know? They do. Yeah, just wants like it's that fear of It's that fear of originality, dude. They fe The music biz fears change. Whether yeah. it's genre, platform, how to sell a record. Yeah. They're, they're, they're living fear, you know? They, they got to be faster to innovate and evolve, man. The bands will do it. The, the, bands young, will. the young bands yeah. are, will be what force the change. Because they'll go, they'll find themselves in a position where they'll go, wait. You want to offer me how much? Dude, we make more on our YouTube. And we own all our shit. Yeah. Pass. And so either the deals will get way better. Yeah. Or, you know, time will sort it out. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Um, or, you know, hey, our singer has this many followers on IG. We have now, we, we have, like, pull and reach. You right. Know, where, where fans, like, you know, when we were coming up, we had no no reach. So we had to sign something no, to, to get, like, a reach. putting you in, you know, the record shop, the label buying you an AP ad. You know, the label paying for your music video, getting yeah. you on MTV2 is like, yeah, you can't do those things on your own. You need a label for that. Yeah. But that's not the landscape anymore. No. No, that changed. Anyone could put up a video on YouTube. Yeah. Anybody. Anybody. And guess what? It can get really popular, and you didn't need a set. You didn't need a director. You didn't need anything other than the phone that's already in your pocket. So, you know, label's going to have to think of some ways to keep their bands, I think. Yeah. Wasn't it Lady Gaga that filmed a music video solely on like like an iPhone? Did, did you did you did you hear about that? I don't doubt it. I don't doubt. I know they've done cool. they've done whole. Didn't Steven Soderbergh do a whole movie on iPhones? Whoa! Yeah, he shot a whole movie on iPhones. Had him like in the steady rig and everything. But oh yeah, yeah. Hey, so whatever. That's, iPhone, that's you know. <laughs> wow. It's so crazy what we have in our pocket, dude. It's it's it always blows my mind. Like, dude, like, what we the technology we have in our hands. 
Yeah. Like this, like we didn't have this like five years ago. Like, and we, I, mean, I always forget like what do we do when we're driving when we had no phones? We just woke up and just sat there just for hours. The I, I I forgot what we did. Just looked out the window, watch <laughs> stuff go by. <laughs> got no. <laughs> you know? A lot of cool trees, a lot of, a lot That's of dirt. That's why you play like Slug Bug and like all those dumb games because yeah. there was nothing to do, <laughs> you know? You're like looking at where's that life plate from, you know? <laughs> you see the fucking de- a desert for hours. Yep. Like driving out to Vegas or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, maybe it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Come up with some of your own thoughts. Totally. You know, I think I think that that's definitely lacking. We need... Yeah, there's, there's something to be said to have that be like, you're not on your phone. Just sit there and think. I, you, know, you know, I I try to make a conscious effort to like not uh, kind of have that be like a go-to. Just yeah. like, oh, I'm bored. Or like you see someone else with their phone out and you just kind of like, well, I guess I'll check something. You know what I mean? It's like I, yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to just uh, go against that feeling. And, and that's another thing I'm trying to yeah. do, not use the GPS as much. Same. I'm, I'm gonna remember these roads, you know. <laughs> Same, dude. Yeah. Same. Maybe that you're know, just getting bored on lockdown, trying to yeah. complicate my life. <laughs> yeah. Remember these roads, and then and then and then when you do, you feel so good. Yeah, you're like, I don't need a GPS. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm ripping them. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll uh, you'll get lost, but uh, but when you get there, I'm like, oh shit, I I remembered where I was going. And you know what? Sometimes oh, figuring shit. something out is a good thing. It is, man. It, it keeps uh it keeps the uh, wiring in in your brain, uh, you know, firing. You, you need that, man. True. You know, it's, it's like it's like a muscle. You need, you need to keep that shit going. Do you guys are going on tour next week? <laughs> Holy know. shit, that's dope. I know it's a grind. That's It'd be great, good. man. Yeah, we're 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 bringing a good show. We're gonna try to knock it out of the park. I mean, you know, hopefully we get some more sellouts, and then got Black Dahlia in September, which is just like a monster. That's great, man. Yeah, you guys got Ginger in in September, October, October, December. It's eight weeker. We haven't done eight weeks in a long time. Man. That's kind of a dream come true, though, right? Actually, it is. I mean, yeah, we, I, it's been a long time on um, both fronts. You know, obviously the time, the obvious, obvious, obvious time off, like, okay, year and a half. But we haven't done a tour that long. I don't know how fucking long, man. Eight weeks. I mean, that's that's some work right there. Eight weeks. I, I work ready. was nine. Ready. You'll be all right. Yeah, I'm ready. Bug it's it. not going to kill you. <laughs> Two shows sold out. There Hopefully there's Oh, dude, you guys get so many sellouts on that thing. Oh, yeah. That, dude, that thing's going to be a banger. Such Junior, a Junior is fucking killing it right now, man. It's awesome. They are. I'm proud of them. They put out that new song. It's fucking sick. Yeah, I got to check. When is their new record coming out? Is it on that tour? It might come out before. I haven't heard much when the record's dropping, but I think they dropped a song this week and it was fucking, oh, damn. It yeah. Was, they do have a really unique sound. It's great. You got, uh, let's see, Launchpad sold out. Nashville sold out. Yeah, Pretty supposedly fucking badass, man. We got uh, what the Black Sheep and the Eighty Ninth Street Collective and OKC are are about to sell out. Really, pretty nice. close here. They're like eighty percent cap. Dude, it's great. So you guys are hitting the Emerson as well. I I heard they got new new management. You know, we we heard this rumor. The okay. new Emerson has been rumored. So okay, hey, we'll do some recon. Okay, please. We'll let we'll let okay, the please. boys know. We'll go and we'll check it out because we're playing the the, the Emerson as well. Okay. We, we had, I think we had one off date in Ginger, and we're going to fucking hit the Emerson hard. And you're, you're like, the Emerson? Dude, I, I heard that, I, again, like, J- JJ fucking hopped on a car, I think. He's yeah. like, I, there's new management, new new uh, right. new cool shit. Like, All, right, All right, let's go. Well, let's just show us. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to wait till you, till you play there, then I'm going hit, to hit you up. So, so how right. is it, dude? How, I'll how, give you the scoop. <laughs> how is it? Cool. Two tours coming up. Uh, the uh, new songs are great. It's awesome. We got another new track coming uh, right as the tour ends, July 23rd. Oh, great. That's another new one. Cool. Yeah. Video? With a video, yep. Nice. With got a music video. We shot. We shot a couple of videos in Arizona like uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. In AZ? In AZ, yeah. Nice, man. Shout out in Phoenix, yeah. Badass. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Trying to stay busy. Well, Sean, thank you for uh, doing this this uh, podcast, man. I had a, I had a great chat with you. It was, thank you, brother. It was awesome. It. Where can people find you? Uh, yeah, IG. Obviously, I'm on IG. Um, yeah, that's, you know, I'm, it's weird. Like, I, I really kind of like didn't use social media all that much. I mean, I, we were using it to like promote band stuff, but like other than yeah. that, I was kind of trying to just stay like 
I don't know, it was getting too abstract. Yeah. And I was in a bad place and everything. So, yeah, I mean, IG, I'm on IG. Find me there. Scotty and Lewis, the band, Carnifex. Um, we're working on a YouTube channel. Great. So follow us on YouTube. Uh, it's just Carnifex. Great. Um, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff on tour. Great. You know, kind of giving people a look at the road and all that stuff. Yeah, do it. People love seeing that, dude. I do. Yeah. I, you Studio, know, practicing, tour. Yeah. Film all of it, dude. We're trying. We're trying to, like, actually be YouTubers, which is, man, it's weird, but we're going to try it. <laughs> you, got, you guys got it, man. <laughs> we'll try it. We'll make it up. Just like, you know, the last thing we did. Just like the band. Just um, make it up. <laughs> make, make it up. Fuck it. Try it. Well, Scotty and Lewis, man. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Later. See you guys.